Hello, thank you for joining with me. We are in Chapter 30, The New Beginning. This is Section 4, The Thought God Holds of You. We're reading with the Course Companions group. If you'd like to close your eyes and join me in prayer. Dear Father, if left to my own devices, my perception will be skewed. I surrender to you everything that I think and feel. God, please take my past, plan my future, send your spirit to redeem my mind that I might be set free. May I be your channel, God, and serve the world. May I become who you would have me be, do what you would have me do, go where you would have me go, and say what you would have me say, and to whom, dear God. God, I thank you for allowing me an open mind and a new experience with this reading today and all things. Thank you, God. Amen. Section 4, The Thought God Holds of You. Nothing that God knows not exists, and what He knows exists forever changelessly. For thoughts endure as long as does the mind that thought of them, and in the mind of God there is no ending nor a time in which His thoughts were absent or could suffer change. Thoughts are not born and cannot die. They share the attributes of their Creator nor have they a separate life apart from Him. The thoughts you think are in your mind as you are in the mind which thought of you. And so there are no separate parts in what, God, in what exists within God's mind. It is forever one, eternally united and at peace. Thoughts seem to come and go, but all this means is that they are is that you are sometimes aware of them and sometimes not. An unremembered thought is born again to you when it returns to your awareness. Yet it did not die when you forgot it. It was always there, but you were unaware of it. The thought, God's hold, the thought that God holds of you is perfectly unchanged by your forgetting. It will always be exactly as it was before the time when you forgot, and will be just the same when you remember. And it is the same within the interval when you forgot. The thoughts of God are far beyond all change and shine forever. They await not birth, they wait for welcome and remembering. The thought God holds of you is like a star unchangeable in an eternal sky. So high in heaven is it set that those, who, those outside of heaven know not it is there. But still and white and lovely will it shine through all eternity. There was no time it was not there. No instant when its light grew dimmer or less perfect ever was. Who knows the Father knows this light, for He is the eternal sky, which holds it safe forever lifted up and anchored sure. Its perfect purity does not depend on whether it is seen on earth or not. The sky embraces it and softly holds it in its perfect place, which is as far from earth as earth from heaven. It is not the distance nor the time which keeps this star invisible to earth. But those who seek for idols cannot know this star is there. Beyond all idols is the thought God holds of you, completely unaffected by the turmoil and the terror of the world, the dreams of birth and death that here are dreamed, the myriad of forms that fear can take. Quite undisturbed, the thought of God holds of you remains exactly as it always was. Surrounded by a stillness so complete, no sound of battle comes remotely near. It rests in certainty and perfect peace. Here is your one reality kept safe, completely unaware of all the world that worships idols and that knows not God. In perfect sureness of its changelessness and of its rest in its eternal home, the thought God holds of you has never left the mind of its Creator, whom it knows as its Creator knows that it is there. 
Where could the thought God, hold, God holds of you exist but where you are? Is your reality a thing apart from you and in a world which your reality knows nothing of? Outside you there is no eternal sky, no changeless star, and no reality. The mind of heaven's son in heaven is, for there the mind of father and of son join in creation, which can have no end. You have not two realities, but one, nor can you be aware of more than one. An idol or the thought God holds of you is your reality. Forget not then that idols must be kept hidden. What you are, not from the mind of God, but from your own. I'm sorry, let me repeat that. For, forget not then that idols must keep hidden what you are, not from the mind of God, but from your own. The star shines still, the sky has never changed. But you, the Holy Son of God himself, are unaware of your reality. And now we will read Robert Perry's commentary on this beautiful section. I have always been struck by the beauty of this section. It's been a favorite of mine for more than 30 years. But just now, I read it very slowly while inserting my name and it took on meaning for me that it has never before. Let me try to convey that meaning. The basis for the section is a view of how thoughts relate to the mind that thinks them. The idea is that thoughts, once brought into being by a mind, become a part of, part of the life of that mind. Once conceived, they remain in that mind like pearls embedded in an oyster, to borrow an image I used yesterday. They are an extension of that mind, and so, as long as that mind exists, they continue to exist. We can lose track of thoughts we have conceived. We can forget them, but in some forgotten corner of our mind, we are still thinking them. They are still there. What is true of thoughts in our mind is also true of thoughts in God's mind. His thoughts, once conceived, exist forever changelessly. As long as he thinks them, they remain in his mind, and he never stops thinking them. Thus, there is no time in which his thoughts were absent or could suffer change. They are permanent realities. As long as he exists, they exist. The significance of this, of course, is that each one of us is a thought in the mind of God. You are a thought he is thinking. He is thinking the light of your awareness into existence right now. If he was not thinking you at this moment, you wouldn't exist. At the same time, now that he has thought you into being, you are a permanent fixture of his mind. He will never, ever stop thinking of you. As I read the section with my name inserted, it hit me what a stupendous thing this is. The ongoing attempt to figure out who I am is like a computer program that runs constantly in the background of my mind. And as it comes up with ever new calculations of what I am, my mood rises and falls with its erratic calculations. If only I knew my being as God is holding it in mind, all that would change. The thought he holds of me is like a star a still and white and lovely star that shines eternally in his mind. That's why he loves me, because he has thought me into being as this perfectly pure celestial light. He does love me because I can quote, he doesn't love me because I can quote the course or make great hot sauce. You should try it. He loves me because of the perfect being he holds in his mind as me. That he holds this thought of me is also the basis for a boundless self-esteem. I don't have that kind of self-esteem yet, but I have every right to it because of the thought that God holds of me. How can I demean myself if God thinks of me as that perfect star? And if what he thinks of me causes what I am, his thought of me is also, as we saw yesterday, the basis for a limitless sense of completion. 
My search for wholeness finds its perfect fulfillment in the whole completely lovely thought that God holds of me. The thought God holds of me gives me everything and it can never change. It will always be mine. It doesn't matter what happens on earth. It doesn't matter what anyone does to me or what anyone says about me. It doesn't matter if I screw up a job or a marriage or my whole life. Completely unaffected by literally everything that happens down here. The thought of God holds of, the thought God holds of you remains exactly as it always was. I might ask how this star can be there when I can't see it. Yet I can forget thoughts in my own mind, thoughts that are still in there somewhere. If I can do that, then surely I can forget thoughts in God's mind. In the same fashion, there are countless stars that shine for billions of years whether or not they are seen on earth. So why wouldn't that be true of the star Jesus describes here? Why would its existence depend on whether it is seen on earth or not? This certainly sounds as if I'm standing here on earth while the thought God holds of me is light years away. My two selves appear to be separate, separated by an unabridged cosmic gulf. Yet, that obviously makes no sense. Where could the thought God holds of you exist but where you are? Is your reality a thing apart from you? I am not two things, an earthly creature and a heavenly star. Rather, I am the thought God holds of me. I am that star. Right now, yet from up on my celestial perch, I so identified with a microscopic idol far below me on a distant planet that I began experiencing myself as that idol. I, that perfect star, began to feel like I was actually that tiny creature living out its tiny life. All I have to do then is stop worshipping the idol of my earthly identity along with all the idols I use to prop up that identity and my awareness will snap back into place. And then I'll simply continue as that eternal star. Thank you so much for joining with me with the Course Companions Group Day 347, Section 4, The Thought God Holds of You. Thank you, Emily Bennington and Robert Perry. I love you. Have a beautiful day.